Recently I bought this second-hand old speaker and now I'm repairing it. But the star of this video is this tiny green printed circuit board. Mini 360 is an ultra compact DC to DC step down voltage converter. And while we're speaking about printed circuit boards, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com. They are specialized in making high quality printed circuit boards in various colors. PCBWay also offers additional services for assembly, 3D printing, metal sheet fabrication, CNC and laser cutting. Nowadays, PCBWay is a one-stop shop for your projects. Mini 360 is amazingly small and amazingly cheap. You can find these modules for less than a US dollar at sites like eBay or AliExpress. Before we deep dive and start experimenting with Mini 360, let's have a quick look at the technical specifications. The input voltage is within the range starting from 4.75 volts up to 23 volts. The output voltage is between 1 and 17 volts. The key feature of Mini 360 is that it is possible to adjust the output voltage within this range. The peak output current is rated at 3 amperes. During long time the output current is supposed to be up to 1.8 amperes. According to the technical specifications, Mini 360 operates in wide temperature range, starting from minus 40 degrees Celsius up to plus 85 degrees Celsius. Mini 360 is advertised as tiny. And I have to say that this module delivers what it promises. The dimensions of Mini 360 are 17 by 11 millimeters. The height is less than 4 millimeters. It is really tiny and makers love it because you can fit Mini 360 in so many different projects. Mini 360 is adjustable DC to DC voltage converter. However, keep in mind that the input voltage must be greater than the output voltage. Let's move to the lab bench. I'm going to adjust Mini 360. I'm providing 12 volts DC from my lab power supply to the input of Mini 360. And using a screwdriver, I'm going to adjust the output voltage to 6 volts DC. There is a dedicated potentiometer on Mini 360. You can see how the voltage changes when I'm adjusting and uh, configuring this potentiometer using a screwdriver. Mini 360 modules have been on the market for several years. While preparing for this video, I figured out that actually there are some differences. Based on my personal experience, there are at least two different versions of Mini 360. Please comment below if you know more hardware versions. There is a small bug in the very first uh, versions. It's harmless. Uh, there is a wrong label on the seal screen. However, the major difference is that the very first versions are using different chip compared to the new versions of Mini 360 that I purchased recently. Both chips are manufactured by monolithic power systems. This is a US company and Mini 360 is coming from China. I checked at Mauser and the price of these chips is significantly higher compared to the price of the whole printed circuit board with all components coming from AliExpress and eBay. This definitely raises some concerns. Furthermore, one of the chips is obsolete and the other one is not recommended for new designs. Actually, after carefully double checking at Mauser, uh, none of these uh, switching voltage regulators are completely obsolete, but both of them 
are not recommended for new designs. As you can see at Mauser, the price tires for any of these monolithic power systems uh, switching voltage regulators is significantly higher compared to the price for Mini 360 uh, for which these modules are available at eBay and AliExpress. Here is a closer look of the two different hardware versions of Mini 360 that I have. You can clearly see the different chips. I haven't done extensive testing of Mini 360 technical specifications yet. However, there is a great blog post that looks into details. The conclusion is that Mini 360 is not especially efficient for light loads below 100 milliamps. Also, the module output is unstable, showing drifting voltage, probably due to the thermal effects on the tripod combined with the thermal effects on the chip's internal MOSFET channel resistance. A link is available in the description of the video for more details. I'm going to recycle an old 12 volt power supply and using Mini 360 I'm going to convert it to a power supply that provides 6 volts DC. I'm doing all this because the old speaker that I'm repairing can either work on batteries or with a power supply at 6 volts DC. I don't want to use it with batteries, therefore I'm going to make a power supply. The first thing is to cut the cord of the power supply that I have. This power supply provides 12 volts DC, just like the test that I did with my lab power supply on the bench a few minutes ago. I need a center positive power supply. Using one of my soldering irons, I'm going to solder the cables to Mini 360. First, I'm going to solder the cables for the output. Of course, the next step is to solder the cables for the input voltage. I'm done with the soldering and I have to double test and to make sure that the output voltage is around 6 volts DC. I'm confident enough that it works, so I can give it a try using the old speaker. The green light on the speaker is an indication that the power supply that I made works fine. I'm ready, I have a compatible power supply and now it's time to give it a try. I'm a Linux user, so I'm going to try out the speaker using Ubuntu Linux distribution on my computer. My computer is connected to a Thunderbolt 4 docking station and I'm going to connect this old speaker to the docking station. There are two cables that I have to plug, of course the power supply that I just did and an audio cable. By the way, this is JBL onstage micro speaker that is about 15 years old. It's pretty funny to connect such an old speaker to a new docking station. I'm gonna press the hardware button on the speaker to increase the volume. Front, left, front, right. The speaker works, my power supply is okay and the Mini 360 does the job that it's supposed to do. Now I'm gonna insulate it. The insulation may create some temperature and heat problems, but this way no one can touch it by a mistake. Let's wrap up this video with conclusions. Mini 360 is tiny, it is super affordable and it works. As I mentioned, there are some concerns regarding the different hardware versions and I'm not sure how reliable it is. But for small makers project, it is a great fit and I'm using it a lot in this type of projects. I don't recommend you to use it for expensive equipment or for any industrial projects. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this type of content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos.